Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's take a look at the sequence of our tracker inside Sunvox on the Raspberry Pi. Sunvox is a modular software synthesizer that's been around for two decades. If you're interested, please join me in this video. Here we go. Okay, so we're back here on Sunvox on the Raspberry Pi. Sunvox is a modular software synthesizer, um, if you didn't watch my last video. Today we'll take a look at the tracker and before we begin we want to check if our MIDI keyboard is set up correctly and we also want to show the timeline on the bottom of the screen. So go to the main menu by tapping here, then go to preferences then go to MIDI and now check if your keyboard is showing up here. We've got the Donner N25 here, so that's okay. Then go to Timeline. And by default, this will be set to Auto and uh, we'll set it to Yes. So tap this and then tap Yes. And then Close. And now Sunvox wants to restart, so tap Yes here and then wait until it's back. I can see the timeline down here. So now next I'm going to create a new project. So tap the main menu again, tap new project, tap empty and here we are. So let's move the output here. And now before I explain the parts of the user interface here, let's first insert a sound source. So double tap this area over here and then let's choose the analog generator and then OK. So now let's take a look at the parts of uh, the user interface. On the top of the screen, we've got the tracker. Um, this is some kind of sequencer, which instead of going sideways, uh, scrolls down. And as you can see, by default, uh, we have four tracks here to work with. Okay, and on the left side of the screen, we can see our synth or sound parameters. And in this area, you can add um, your sound modules or effect modules and um, connect them to the output. And down here is a timeline which is used for arranging the tracks you made. Okay, so let's begin by connecting our analog synth to the output. So this is easy, just hold this and then tap this. Now you can see we've got a virtual patch cable running from the analog synthesizer to the output. Okay, so first I want to set up my analog sound source a bit. So let's change the waveform from triangle to square wave. And now we've got this. Okay, so now take a look at the upper part of the screen here. We've got four tracks here. And you see those dotted spaces, those are for you to fill in with notes. And it's important to know each of these dotted spaces can only hold one note. So if you want to play a chord, you have to use up to four tracks for seven chords or three tracks for a standard chord. So let's begin by recording something. So just tap the space over here and make sure your cursor is in the first line. And if you're using a keyboard, you can just press a space on the keyboard. But um, yeah, on the touch screen, you have to unlock this. So press this lock icon here. And now you can see there's a small menu up here. We'll get into that soon. Now I can just um, play some notes here. We're in step recording mode. And uh, yeah, let's uh, create a short sequence. So now I can move uh, to the next line using these arrows here. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's lock this again. So now you can um, press play here. Okay, one thing you have to know is each note you enter will be held as long as the next note is played. So let's play another note here. And if I leave it like this, uh, this note will be held throughout the sequence. Let's listen. Thank you. 
Okay, so if you want this note to end right here, you'll have to unlock this and insert a note off command, which can be found here. So you can see there's this line here now, and now this note will be stopped immediately after being played for one step. So let's listen to this. Now I'm going to record two more tracks here. So we get the chord sequence playing along and then I'll come back to you. Okay, I'm back and I've added two more tracks here containing one note each. Let's listen to this. Okay, so far so good. You see I've also changed the release value and the sustain value of my sound just a tiny little bit. Now we've got one more empty track in a four track pattern here, so uh, let's uh, use that for drum tracks. So double tap the synth area over here once more and then choose the drum synth. Press OK and connect it to the output once again. And now as I've chosen this drum synth, you can see um, the list of parameters on the left side changes a bit. Now place the cursor in the fourth track uh, once again, unlock this and now we can just play the drums. Okay, that's it, let's listen. Okay, while we're here, please take a look at the, the notation here. There's always the note and there's the instrument. You can change this. For example, I could just root this note to instrument one if I unlock this and enter one here. Obviously, that's a bit hard to do on touch screen, but if you have a keyboard with you, um, that's relatively easy. Next, I'll copy this pattern and change it a bit and then arrange it in the timeline. Okay, so what we want to do now is move up the timeline here a bit so we have more space to work with. Now mark this pattern you created, then press this menu over here and now just clone this like this. Now this is a clone which is yeah, a virtual copy of your pattern, so now uh, the next thing is we need to detach this from uh, its original parent. So press detach here. Now we have um, two separate copies of this pattern and I can now start changing this one without uh, changing the first pattern I created. So move the timeline a little bit down again. Now I'm going to change the notes here and I will not show the whole process on video. I'll return to you later. Okay, so I've changed the, the second pattern now and now uh, we can once again drag this a little bit up and if you play this back back to back now, you'll get this. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you today is how to add a bass track. So let's once again take a look at our tracker here and you will notice that now we have filled all our patterns here. And if I want to add a bass track, there'd be two possibilities how to do this. The first one is you could go here into the pattern menu and then take a look at pattern properties over here. Now we could just uh, go here and increase the number of tracks from 4 to 5 or something. But that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm going to create a new pattern. So go down here to the timeline, then press this menu here and create a new pattern. Okay, now let's move this pattern here. And now, yeah, um, we need to make some green space once again. Okay, and now uh, you can see I created a new um, virtual instrument here. Um, it's just a saw wave bass. And uh, what I'm going to do now is to go to my new pattern here. 
and just uh, record a simple bass pattern. Okay, so lock this again. Now listen to this. Okay, and what you can do now is, uh, let's go back to the timeline here. Now let's just drag this pattern up here and line it here. And now let's play back a sequence. Okay, um, you see, uh, we can just uh, duplicate this pattern. So press that menu here and then uh, let's clone this. And now um, we can play back the whole sequence. Yeah, so yeah, the timeline is quite powerful. You can just uh, mix and match all your patterns, play them back uh, simultaneously or arrange them in a line. And yeah, I'm going to do that now, um, make this a little bit more complex. I'm going to add some effects here and um, yeah, then I will do short improvisation. And then that's the end of this video. So this was the tracker on um, Sunvox on the Raspberry Pi. Um, only the basics, there's much more in here than I showed you today. But I've got to stop the video somewhere, obviously. So if you have any more questions on this, just post them under this video, please. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more Raspberry Pi or Sunvox videos on this channel, please consider subscribing now. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a channel member using the button under this video, or join my Patreon like these awesome people over here. Thank you very much. That's it for today. Sunbox on the Raspberry Pi and its tracker and sequencer. I hope you found this useful and interesting. And if you did, please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.